Well, hi, you BookTube. Bill Rudenberg here with the Rudenberg Library. I wanted to come to you this morning with an announcement. This is the Historathon 2024 announcement video. Um, I'm a little bit late to the game. Most of my other co-hosts have already got up their, their uh, announcement videos, but uh, better late than never, right? So 2024 hasn't started just yet, so I guess I'm not totally late. But I did want to get this video up a couple weeks ago, and we've had family and Christmas and basketball and just all kinds of stuff going on. And uh, I haven't done any videos, let alone you know my announcement videos. So anyway, wanted to come to you and, like I said, tell you about Historathon 2024. Now this is going to be a continuation of um, last year's Historathon 2023. Uh, when we did that event last year, it turned into a really big hit across BookTube, and uh, we were very, very pleasantly surprised with, um, you know, with the results of that, and uh, we wanted to continue that. And it seems that, uh, of course, we've got a Voxer feed and a, uh, a Discord going, and it seems like, as I watch the Discord go, it seems like we have gotten a ton more people that have joined us for this year's event. And everybody's getting all revved up and warmed up and getting their TBR lists all put together. And it just warms my heart because I am a uh, history, nonfiction history reader naturally. And so I just absolutely love to see people getting fired up about history. And what's really neat about history is, you know, a lot of people like fiction, but History is the same thing, except for it's real, you know, and all you got to do is find the right genre or the right, um, you know, just time period or people to read about. There's all kinds of stuff. So anyway, if you are new to this event, let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, Historathon is a year-long celebration of reading historical nonfiction. The goal is to read discuss and spotlight works of history and to encourage reluctant readers to give history a try. The calendar year will be divided into three month long segments or blocks with each block focusing on a particular period of time. So from January through March, so January, February, March, we will be covering prehistory to 500 AD. And then from April May and June, we will be doing 500 to 1500 AD. And then uh, July, August, and September will be 1500 to 1820. And then, of course, at the end of the year, October, November, and December will be 1820 to the present. Now, just to explain real fast, there is kind of an odd break there with the year 1820. Uh, Vin, our fearless leader, our founder of Historathon, uh, he had decided to make that break so that if people are reading um, Jane Austen in July or Victober, if they're if they are reading in one of those two uh, reading events here on BookTube, they can kind of just piggyback with their reading selections with our uh, Historathon. 2024. And uh, it's worked out really well. I know a lot of people have done that. And there's several other, while I'm talking about that, there's several other reading events throughout the, you know, the uh, year that you could definitely piggyback those into Historathon 2024. And I'm thinking of like in, in uh, November, nonfiction November definitely plays up in this. This last year, 2023, we started the inaugural event of World War November, which is uh, studying and emphasizing World War I in our readings. And uh, you can definitely play these type of events. And there's several others. Uh, you can use your imagination on how to make them work. But for Historathon, <clears throat> excuse me, for Historathon, you just have to be reading history, nonfiction, and fit it into those time periods for it to count towards our event. So to participate, simply read a work of history that falls into the time period for each quarterly segment of the year. Read more if you'd like. Tailor the choices to your interests or try something completely new. That is totally up to you. There's nothing other than the time frame, you know, we're trying to, so just so we can have good conversations. It's not like we're trying to limit people's reading. It's more to, uh, so that we can, um, you know, just discuss what we're reading and, and share these, these works of, uh, history. 
So Historathon side quests, another event or part of this event, uh, the side quests will be encouraging and participating in history-related activities throughout the year. Uh, it, it, this includes watching historical films, documentaries, trying historical recipes, listening to historical music, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, feel free to join us on those adventures when you're in the Discord. There's a whole um, Discord, uh, I, I don't know what those are called because I'm not a, a tech person, but the, there's a, a channel, if you will, within our Discord that uh, deals with nothing but side quests. I know last year, Vin uh, introduced us to a uh, an ancient game from the Middle East uh, that was that was founded by a member of the British uh, Museum, and that was pretty cool. Uh, I know he plays it with his kids at school. I think he even plays it maybe with his kids at home. Um, but it's a it's a pretty cool game. I found a channel uh, that that does cooking from the 1700s. Uh, the Nutmeg Tavern is where he kind of presides, and I, I'm going blank on the on the channel name, but awesome stuff on there, and it shows you how to make recipes from that time period using the ingredients of that time period, a lot of it frontier type stuff or colonial stuff. I mean, there was just all kinds of really neat stuff that we found that would go in with those side quests, you know, trips to museums. I took my kids to the World War One Museum this uh, this year, and I, I included pictures with that into uh, the Discord to share with everybody. And there were people that went to other museums. So there's all kinds of ways that you can participate and further your education, your own personal education, in this uh, reading event, Historathon 2024. Um, so we will be using the hashtag Historathon 2024. Um, and like I said earlier, we also have a Discord and a Voxer channel, and we'll try. To, I'll try to leave those links down below and uh, in the description so that you can get uh, you can join those. I have uh, several other co-hosts that we have all been in the uh, you know with our fearless leader Vin from Revenant Reads. He he did a calling to some of us to ask if we wanted to co-host. So there's many of us minions that are uh, in charge of some of our, you know, helping to lead this event. And so some of those are, of course, myself at uh, Bill Rutenberg's name, my channel. Uh, obviously you're here, so check out the rest of the channel. <laughs> um, uh, Erica at Passage of Time, go check out her channel. She does some awesome stuff with... Um, like early, early man. Uh, she, that's, that's her, her area of expertise. Go check out some of her videos. She's got some awesome stuff with Neanderthals and, and, uh, you know, just all the different classifications of, of man as, as time developed. Um, Gareth at Book Songs and Other Magic. He's a British guy who does a lot of cool stuff, uh, as his, uh, channel says with songs and stuff. So he adds a whole new uh, perspective to everything. And I love listening to his videos. Go check out uh, Mark at Book Time with Elvis. He uh, was the mastermind of our Discord channel, put all that together for us. And we're, we're thankful for that. And he does a lot of stuff on his channel. Go check him out. Um, Fred at Read by Fred, another one who's got some great book recommendations. Uh, Mariana at Mariana Moss Books. Uh, she specializes in uh, Latin American studies. Uh, I know she does a lot with uh, Mexico, with like the Aztecs and the Mayas and uh, just all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, and, and she's just got this love for the history of her country, and you definitely need to go check out the, her channel. It's pretty awesome uh, to listen to. It, it, it comes through in the videos. It's pretty awesome. Um, John David, uh, go check out his channel. He uh, does, I hate to pigeonhole John David because he does studies all over the place, and he's really good in the, the, the first quarter reading stuff, second quarter reading stuff, and I would bring him into the third and fourth quarter reading stuff. He, he is an in, extremely smart individual and fun to listen to when he gets to going in the Discord. Um, he, he always is very helpful with people, uh, has a great sense of humor, and then 
as always, uh, Peg over at the History Shelf, our, our queen of book hauls, our queen of history, um, queen of book reviews. She is the queen and uh, does a lot of great stuff. And if you're watching my channel, you probably already watch hers. But if you don't, go check her out her channel. Go check out all of these co-hosts' channels and give them some support. Look into their videos. A lot of great book reviews, book recommendations, book hauls. Um, buddy chats. There's a ton of those going on, especially with all of these. They've already got some of those set up on the Discord, uh, some people who are doing buddy chats back and forth. And it has just been wonderful to watch this thing, this this event explode. Um, so with that being introduced, now let me talk about, uh, this is kind of my, the second part will be my uh, 20 historathon 2023 in review. So how did I do with my historathon 2023, you know, just reading plans? Did I, did I follow through on stuff? If you, if you followed my channel, I kind of went quiet here the second half of the year with making videos. I've got a few of them, but I haven't made a ton because my family and I, we moved into a new house and just, I finally got the books on the bookshelf and I'm starting to get things set up and putting it into order so I can find stuff and um, it, it, things have been chaotic here and making videos with the busy schedule on top of it. We've had family the last three weeks at our house and then, you know, putting all this together, teaching, coaching, just everything. No excuses, but I guess it is my excuse. I uh, haven't done a lot of videos for Historathon 20. 23 like I had planned to do. So let me give you my year in review here. So for the first quarter, uh, the prehistory to 500, I read seven different works throughout those three three months. And some of it carried into the second quarter, into a fourth month, just to get things finished up. So um, I, I guess I do have to admit to that. But I had a stack of books that I really wanted to read. So, so I did. Uh, my uh, my first one that I read was Ancient Africa, a Global History to 300 CE by Christopher Erit. And uh, Princeton University Press sent me that book. And I thought it was a pretty good little introduction to early uh, early African history. Uh, it wasn't super detailed just because, I mean, it was a pretty small book. But it was, it was pretty good, very readable. I understood it. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it as at least a starting point for people. Uh, let's see here. I read The Babylonians, An Introduction by Gwendolyn Leak. Uh, this was obviously a book on the Babylonians. Another pretty small work, just because I am very new to this area of history, this early period. That is not where my studies have concentrated in my, uh, in my young life, my 23 years of living. Um, most of my reading is in the 17 and 1800s, and so I, I I learned a lot with this first quarter just because I have not read much. But the Babylonians and Introduction, this was I thought it was a pretty good book. I think what did it have five chapters? I think and four out of the five I really enjoyed. There was one that was a little slow go for me. Uh, other people might enjoy it though, uh, but I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty decent little read. I know I think Vin at Revenant Reads is going to be reading this book. I think he's the one that said he was. Um, let's see. Another book that I picked up, and I got this one from the library, was Lost Cities, Ancient Tombs, by, and it was edited by Ann R. Williams. Now, this was a book that had tons and tons of photography. It was a National Geographic book, but it did, was it, a hundred? I think, a hundred of the archaeological finds in recent years, the the most profound finds and uh, just did, you know, like a two to four page write up with tons of pictures along the way. And it was awesome. It was excellent. Highly, highly recommend it. It's something you can dip in and out of and you can, you could read that in a few days or you could stretch it out into a long period of time. I stretched mine out a little bit uh, to make it work. So I, I would read two or three chapters, four chapters every morning. And uh, it kind of stretched over the whole time period. And I enjoyed it. I read a biography of Cleopatra, Cleopatra, A Life by Stacey Schiff. This one's been talked about on BookTube. It's, it's had lots and lots of uh, time in the spotlight. 
for a good reason. Stacy Schiff, who's just an excellent biographer as it is, did an excellent job writing this. Um, again, it, it's hard to write biographies on people from ancient times just because sources are so, there's just not a lot. And uh, I thought she did a magnificent job with what she had to work with. And I learned a lot about Cleopatra that I didn't know before. I had some basic knowledge, but nothing too detailed. This is the first biography I've ever read. So um, I guess time will tell because I'll have to compare it to some other biographies. Um, I listened to on audio the smart Neanderthal. Bird Catching, Cave Art, and the Cognitive Revolution by Clive Finlayson. And I enjoyed that as well. And it, it basically uh, used the study of uh, bones, bird bones in these caves in Europe. And um, they, they just connected some dots on how birds played a role in Neanderthal life. And I found it to be pretty fascinating. Uh, when you, again, when you get into that really old time, a lot of that is, um, you know, you're just piecing, putting pieces of the puzzle together and trying to make a picture. And so I, I always find it interesting to listen to those. Um, Egypt's golden couple, uh, how Akhenaten and Nefertiti became gods on earth by John and Colleen Darnell. This was another book that got quite a bit of limelight and some pretty good press reviews, and I enjoyed it. I started out reading it, and then I put it down, and then came back to it, and then I did audio while I was reading it. Just, I was trying some new stuff. I don't normally do that, but I've, I've heard people on BookTube who've, you know, they, they listen to audio, they read on, uh, you know, reading devices and stuff. So here this last year, I've been a lot of uh, just experimenting with that, just to see how it affects me. And um, does the old dinosaur reader in me need to update stuff? And so um, I, I was trying new things and it helped me get through that book. It, it really did. It helped me, you know, stay on task and not sometimes with the older stuff that I'm not super familiar with. Sometimes my mind can, you know, wander off. So that kind of helped me stay on track with the book. And I really enjoyed the book. It was pretty good. And then the last book for this first quarter of 2023 that I read was The Scythian Empire, Central Eurasia and the Birth of the Classical Age from per Persia to China by Christopher Beckwith. This was another one sent by Princeton University Press to me. Um, I will be very honest. This was the worst of all of the reads that I did probably for the whole year of all of the books. And I read... I think my total is going to come up to around 126 books, I think, total books that I read, fiction and nonfiction, and this is probably the bottom of the pile. It is. It was not my favorite. I did not think the author did a very good job. I would not recommend it. His, his evidence he used was pretty dicey, um, and then he even starts in the introduction with making excuses about, about COVID and his, its its effects on his research and everything. And I'll be honest, at the end of it, all I could think was, then why did you publish the book? Why did you go ahead and publish? Why didn't you wait until you had the research when COVID was all done? So anyway, I don't like excuse. I don't, I don't like to listen to him make excuses, I guess. Um, so that's what I read for first quarter. Second quarter, um, was I only have one book for second quarter. Uh, that was The Distant Mirror, The Calamitous 14th Century by Barbara Tuckman. And I read this, um, I started it as a, a buddy read and then didn't finish the buddy read and I came back and, and finished it on my own just because it was taking me forever to get through the book. Super good book. Barbara Tuckman does a fabulous job, thoroughly enjoyed it. But it was super duper detailed, super duper long. Um, I did this one on the recommendation of Steve Donahue, who uh, was reading through it, and I wanted to join in. And I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't join in on that buddy read because I would have never kept up with them. And um, it's a good book about the Middle Ages. It gives you a good picture of one family and one nobles family life within that century. 
Highly recommend it if you're studying the Middle Ages. It was really good. Now, I only read one book for that quarter simply because several of these from first quarter kind of bled over into second quarter. And so I only got that done. So let's move on to third quarter. I got three books done in third quarter for Historathon 2023. I read American Colonies by Alan Taylor. I did this as a buddy read with my good friend Brian. Uh, awesome book. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Very detailed. He hits all of the colonial powers that were involved in, in um, colonizing the Americas. He hits all of their stories. He does it not only from the European perspective, but he, I thought he did a really good job of doing it from the Native American perspective. And he hit the different tribes and he attacked a few things from different angles that I hadn't thought about before. Really, really enjoyed this, and I look forward to further reading Alan Taylor's works because he's got some other big books that look really good. I just got to make sure I have time to do them. Um, and I, uh, I also read for third quarter Revolutionary Summer, The Birth of American Independence by Joseph Ellis. This was actually a reread. I read that several years ago, and um, I went through that book and enjoyed it as always. Um, obviously it's about 1776, the revolutionary summer. Um, and Joseph Ellis just, he always does a really good job with, um, with, with all of his stuff. Uh, let's see here. And then the third book that I read was a buddy read with my good friend Peg. And it was our first civil war patriots and loyalists in the American revolution by HW brands. And we've, we've buddy read a few H.W. Brand's books. Both of us are fans. Um, I thought it was really good. Well done. Um, he uses he he relies very heavily on primary sources to tell his story. His words are are just sprinkled here and there with heavy doses of quotations. Now, as the book went on, I liked it more and more as the book went on. I kind of was kind of stood back just a little bit right off the get-go uh, because I thought he was maybe using too much. But um, as it as I got further into the book, I thought it worked well. Um, and then I just realized that I fibbed to you. I read six books for third quarter, not three. I read six books for third quarter. I also read the recent, uh, recently published uh, The Wager, a Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder by David Glenn. And it is everything that the critics have said. It is very, very good. Uh, very entertaining about a, a crew that gets shipwrecked out in the Pacific. They were trying to go around the, the uh, South American Cape and they were going through the um, Magellan Strait and they got their boat got stuck in there. They ended up getting shipwrecked and stranded on an island for quite some time and they they rely or they they were forced into desperate situation. They anyway, they eventually get their ba way back to Europe and it just tells that whole story. Really good read. Highly recommend that. Um I buddy read David McAuliffe's uh biography on John Adams. I did that with Patrice Jones. Uh, another excellent booktuber who buddy reads all the time. She is fabulous buddy reader, one of my favorites. And uh, we buddy read that. And I think we both really, really enjoyed it. And we got a, a good uh, personal view of John Adams. You get to know the, know the guy through David McAuliffe's writings, who if you've never read David McAuliffe, um, why haven't you? <laughs> he is an awesome biographer. I mean, he does keyhole histories as well, but a lot of it's a lot of his works are biography, and um, they're just all good. I don't think I've ever come across a bad David McAuliffe. Um, I know we plan on reading in a few weeks. We're gonna get into David McAuliffe's uh, biography on Harry Truman, and I'm really looking forward to that. That's gonna be awesome. Uh, it won't count for Historathon 2024 just because it won't be in the time frame, but I am looking forward to reading that and listening to Patrice's opinion on everything and adding in my own opinion, and we just always have a really good time reading those books. Um, and the last third quarter book that I read was one that uh, I'd been wanting to read for a long time, like for the last two years. It's been on my TBR list. 
um, is General George Washington, A Military Life by Edward Lingle. And um, you talk about an awesome book. And it is exactly what it says. It's a biography, but it, it centers in on just his military exploits. And um, he pulls no punches. Uh, it, you know, he's, he, he tells the good stuff about Washington, but he also tells the bad stuff. I, th I thought he did a very even handed job of showing the, the genius and the not so genius moments of Washington's military career. And he fully explains like w with the mess ups, he explains the mess ups on how and why it happened. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Very readable, highly recommended to anybody wanting to read uh, stuff on George Washington, um, and you, and especially if you're wanting to, you know, key in on his his um, military exploits. Um, so that brings us to the fourth quarter, and I read five books for fourth quarter of Historathon 2023. I read Midnight Rising, John Brown and the Raid that Sparked the Civil War by Tony Horwitz. Uh, very good book. It's exactly what it says. It's the story of John Brown and how he tried to bring about uh, emancipating the slaves uh, in his own way. Uh, it was a, a dramatic way. And unfortunately, at the time, the, the country wasn't ready for it. It was close, but not quite ready for it. And it tells that whole story about his his planning. And of course, if you've never read about John Brown, he's an interesting character anyway around it. But I recommend that it was a it was very readable. I read um, his truth is marching on John Lewis and the power of hope by John Meacham. Awesome, awesome book, just awesome. I had not ever read anything on John Lewis, and um, I mean I knew who he was, civil rights guy, but I had and, and I've seen the famous pictures of him, you know, at the standing at the bridge and. And I've, I've seen all that, but I didn't know the story. And of course, when he passed away a while back, <clears throat> this book came out pretty quick. And I was like, man, I want to, I want to get to know, you know, everybody's celebrating him, but I don't know him well enough. And I mean, he, he was very instrumental in the civil rights movement and the stuff he did. I mean, you talk about some bravery. Um, I pulled some quotes from that book that, just make me shake my head at what the what the uh, African Americans were going through during that time period, and the people who were thoroughly involved in those marches, in those uh, those sit-ins, in the the bus rides, the freedom rides, uh, you know, all of those events. Those people were very very brave, and I know I'm going to use some quotes from that book when my class covers that. We're going to be doing a big. Uh, history project with my sixth grade here in a couple weeks, and it's it's all about civil rights, and the kids get some you know some freedoms in the projects that they're going to choose as far as who or what event they're going to cover, and I'm going to use some stuff from that book. It was really good, very readable. Uh, let's see, another book I read was Storm of Steel. It was a memoir of World War One by Ernst Junger, and you talk about a powerful book. If you like memoirs, you need to read Storm of Steel. It is the nitty-gritty, down in the trenches during World War I, pulls no punches. Thoroughly, um, I, I hesitate to say enjoyed it. Um, that's probably not the right word, but I found it fascinating and interesting, and he just engrossed me through the whole book. It pulled me into the time and, and showed me the goods and the bads, and there weren't a lot of goods. So... Um, Third book I read during fourth quarter was My Friend Anne Frank by Hannah Pick Gossler. It's a new book that came out about um, Hannah's life and how she um, survived the Holocaust and um, was friends with Anne Frank, obviously, and the you know the different paths that those two took. But she she gives a very engrossing. Uh, story to what she went through and it was horrific and just everything that happened with the Holocaust. That's what we're going to recover with my seventh grade when we get back from Christmas break. Um, just horrific stuff. Um, anyway, highly recommend that book. And then the last book that I uh, finished oh, about a week ago was uh, Destiny and Power, The Odyssey of 
uh, George Herbert Walker Bush by John Meacham, another presidential biography by Meacham uh, about the first George Bush, and very, very good. I really enjoyed it. I thought it, you can tell that Meacham is a fan of George Bush. I mean, you just kind of get that feel through the, through the writing process, uh, or through the reading his writing. And, uh, but at the same time, he gives, I thought, a pretty even handed uh, account of his life. And, um, it was published before his death, but not very far before his death. So it brings it all the way up to his late, late years, in uh, up to about when he was 90 or so. Um, so almost his entire lifespan, uh, minus just a couple years. I thought it was really good and very, very readable. Highly recommend that book. So book two, that brings me to a total of 19 books that I read uh, that specifically fell into, you know, the Historathon 2023 parameters. Um, now, I read lots of other books, but they were not in the time frame, so I didn't count them on the list. But um, I can count 19 of them that I did for Historathon. Very, very good uh, works, uh, with the exception of the one. I, I enjoyed all of them, but probably one. Uh, so that brings me to this year. This coming year, the first quarter of Historathon 2024 for January, February, and March. And that is, again, the time period of prehistory to 500 AD. And um, I am going to read the first one. I don't have the book with me. It's at school, on the bookshelf at school. But it is uh, it is one that I actually had on the list for last year, but I didn't quite get to it. I just ran out of time. Um, it is The Other Greeks. The Family Farm and the Agrarian Roots of Western Civilization by Victor Davis Hanson. And I had several of you last year who told me that uh, that was a that that author is a very good author, and that um, I will really like that work. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, just about the lives of the Greeks. And so my other two books. So notice I'm only putting three on this list. I'm going to try to limit myself, and then if I just get more. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, but I want to limit myself so that I'm not feeling disappointed if I don't get to something. But the next one that I'm going to read is, um, I was I was at Barnes & Noble yesterday, and I was looking for some history books on China because I have no knowledge of Chinese history for the most part. Um, I am teaching it in world history, but I have not done a lot of reading on it. And so I wanted to fix that. And so I started with a really simple book. I looked it up on Goodreads. It had a, I think a four out of five stars. Um, so I thought I'd take a chance. It's, it's got a little bit of everything from the beginnings all the way to the present. And it's called The Shortest History of China. From the Ancient Dynasties to a Modern Superpower, a Retelling of Our Times by Linda uh, Jabin. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, yeah, it is, it is pretty short for being a, you know, that big of a timeline. It's 277 pages total. Uh, the text is 255 pages. Now I will say that the, the sources are not super detailed. There's not a ton, but I think it'll, it'll work for what I'm wanting right at the moment. And then maybe I can look for specialty histories in the different dynasties and, and maybe like the Great Wall and, you know, stuff like that. So I'll read the back to you real fast. <clears throat> it says, as we enter the Asian century, China demands our attention for being an economic powerhouse, a beacon of rapid modernization, and an assertive geopolitical player. To understand the nation behind the headlines, we must take in its vibrant, tumultuous past, a story of larger-than-life characters, philosophical arguments and political intrigues, military conflicts and social upheavals, artistic invention, and technological innovation. The shortest history of China charts a path from China's tribal origins through its storied imperial era up to the end of the modern Communist Party under uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, including the rare, rarely told story of women in China and the specters of corruption and disunity that continue to haunt the People's Republic today. A master storyteller and exacting historian, Linda Javen, distills this vast history into a short, riveting account 
that today's globally minded readers will find indispensable. I'm hoping I'll find it indispensable. Uh, like I said, I, I know it's not super detailed, but hopefully it'll just give me some stuff to, you know, some jump off points. That's what I'm looking for. I'm wanting something that's not extremely detailed right at this moment, just because I need to, um, I, I don't know enough to go into a detailed history. I need to start small and then work my way up. And so, and then also at Barnes and Noble, they didn't have a ton of selections um, that were, you know, this type of a book. So that's what I'm going to go with. And then the next one is actually something I was, I was looking for something on the Romans. Uh, that is what we're covering right now in my world history class. Um, and um, the, who was it? Oh, goodness. I was looking back. I remembered this. I saw this book and I remembered it being recommended on the Discord on Historathon 2023 back in that first quarter. And I couldn't, and I'm going blank on who, on who uh, recommended it. I do apologize. But it's Rubicon, The Last Years of the Roman Republic by Tom Holland. And um, it looks very readable. It is, let's see, 408 pages total with, if we're just looking at the text itself, 375 pages. So it's not too bad. Um, really looking forward to digging into this because I think it, it looks, when I was kind of just scrolling through, or not scrolling through, paging through, um, it, it looked very readable. So let me read the back of it real fast. It says, in 49 BC, the seventh, 705th years since the founding of Rome, Julius Caesar crossed a small border river called the Rubicon and plunged Rome into a cataclysmic civil war. Tom Holland's enthralling account tells the story of Caesar's generation, witness to the twilight of the Republic and its bloody transformation into an empire. From Cicero, Spartacus, and Brutus to Cleopatra, Virgil, and Augustus, here are some of the most legendary figures in history brought thrillingly to life combining verve and freshness with scrupulous scholarship. Rubicon is not only an engrossing history of this pivotal era, but a uniquely resonant portrait of a great civilization in all its extremes of self-sacrifice and rivalry, decadence and catastrophe, intrigue, war, and world-shaking ambition. So really looking forward to that one, uh, BookTube. So those are my my three books, so I've got these two right here, and then my third one that is at school. Um, these are my books for first quarter Historathon 2024, and this has been a very long and drawn out introduction to the event. I hope everyone joins us, um, join the Discord, join the Voxer. Uh, uh, a lot of the conversations going on on Discord, that's where you'll get probably the bulk of it, the meat and potatoes of it. Um, join us. It's an awesome event celebrating nonfiction history. So um, thank you, BookTube, especially if you lasted this long. Um, I look forward to talking to you in the Discord. Go check out all those channels of the co-hosts. Lots and lots of recommendations if you're needing stuff to read from the simple stuff to the really, really technical, detailed stuff. So uh, BookTube, until next time, thank you for watching and happy reading.